It gaf ci le kef It gaf ci le kef Amel li wut ci le kef Il li wut ci le kef Nit gaf nit gaf Nit gaf nit gaf Okay so this is free thinking this is the Grand Agoda Papa lifestyle channel I'm not going to go for my usual introduction because I'm I'm not even pissed off. I'm just emotional and I really just want to get this down. I may be interrupted because normally I try and get some time to do these podcasts. I've got a busy family life, etc. People coming in and out. Um, this is just spur of the moment. There are no show notes. There is no research. I just need to say this. Um, I always try not to be topical, but, you know, every once in a while something affects you and... You know, it's a Wednesday morning and over the weekend that's just passed. It's um, today's the 7th of um, November. There were five murders, um, knife crime related murders of young people. Um, I'm pretty sure it was five in three days, four over the weekend. And I'm just watching a Victoria Derbyshire program because I watch BBC News. Let's not get into that. Um, You know, everyone's got their own opinion on that. But, you know, I was watching this and... You know, it's funny because I wasn't going to mention, I wasn't going to do a podcast on this, to be honest with you. But as I said, the vibe just took me because fun enough, I was talking about this to my wife yesterday and she said to me, oh, what do you think this is about? And I only heard one guy just saying it a few minutes ago after listening to almost an hour, um, half an hour, maybe an hour of debate. He said, let's just cut the crap, right? Knife crime obviously is multifaceted. Young people killing each other anywhere in the world, whether it's on the streets of London or as I've seen other reports on the streets of Sheffield. Um, they used to call Manchester Gunchester when I was still in England 20 years ago. Nottingham was popping off 20 odd years ago. Um, again, like a, a big gun thing. You know, it's, of course it's multifaceted, but in the last, whatever it is, year, the 36% increase, to me, it's like it's just a very obvious thing that people just don't want to deal with the reality. So here is the one. Chancellor of the Exchequer, Hammond, said austerity has come to an end. No, it was Theresa May who said austerity has come to an end. Well, let's just break this down. Fucking whoopty do. Austerity has come to an end. Well, isn't that fucking wonderful? But have we ever really considered what austerity has caused? Now, if austerity, for example, has come to an end in Greece, fucking whoopty do. That is not going to do any good for the guy who set himself a light. That's a protest to how badly he and other people in this country were suffering due to the causes and the measures that were brought in as austerity in Greece, um, going back maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little bit less. So what has austerity done in the UK? Well, I'm not getting into political debate because this is about knife crime and every single news agency um, in England talking nonstop about how can we stop this knife crime? Um, what's going on? This is uh, this is shocking. This is outrageous. This is terrible. How do we stop this? Well, you need to start with how did it start? And again, that's multifaceted. And that's the thing. I know I can go on forever. So I'm going to just focus on a couple of clear points. I want to just go to the point basically that um, when I was first introduced to free economics, I'm an, I'm an economist. So I loved this. And one of the things they broke down, which just blew my mind and made me happy in equal measure, was this whole thing about Mayor Giuliani, who was a very controversial and right wing mayor of New York at a single uh, particular time where he had a zero um, tolerance policy against gangs and crime. And he came out of that office basically boasting that his zero po- tolerance policy, free strikes and you're out sending young people to prison forever, um, had worked and he had cut crime in that area, you know, in New York by so much. And when Free Economics actually looked at the data, I can't remember which one of the two it was. I'll be straight with you because this is going back 20 odd years even when I read this. It was either a fall in the birth rate that had led to less young people becoming available to get into gang crime around the time that he became in office. So gang crime fell or it was a period of economic prosperity. Um, where because there was an economic boom at the time he came into office, You know, basically people chose to take medium paying jobs with no risk rather than criminal activity, which came with high risk. And that's the one I want to focus on here, because people just don't want to seem to talk about this. And this is just fucking very clear. Most people don't wake up, grow up, teenage and go, I don't want to be a gangster. 
Now, I understand the concept of they want to get, you know, get into that because they like the music and the lifestyle seems cool. All the rappers are talking about it. But like I said to people, don't get this twisted. Don't be an idiot. When we was all growing up watching Rocky, I don't know how much Rocky contributed to the armed services recruitment. I'm sure it did a bit, but not everybody. I'm sorry, not Rocky. I mean, Rambo. I mean, Rambo. Now, everybody who um, watched Rambo joined the armed forces. They might have got their rocks off a little bit, thought they were a bad man, Googled or, or back then, you know, bought a couple of gun magazines or a couple of um, military magazines, but they weren't going to go all the way in and join the armed forces, even if they were allowed to. Um, and in the same way, people listening to rap music, trap music, drill music, talking about, um, you know, I'm a gangster, I'm going to kill this guy, that guy got murked, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, cool, it's all so fun, it's entertainment, it's exciting, like rock, like watching, uh, uh, um, like I said, like a Rambo movie or an action gangster movie. You know, not everybody who watched The Godfather went in and became a gangster. The Godfather is not, for example, a black-focused movie. It's Italian-Americans and it's loved. It's got loads of, um, if not Oscars, lots of plaudits. It's everywhere. Not everybody who watches The Godfather goes and then becomes a criminal and joins um, uh, joins the mafia. So don't get this twisted just because something's exciting and engaging. It actually affects people's real-life decisions to that extent. What affects people's real-life decisions are their real fucking lives. How much money have I got? What is my potential based on my circumstances in society to earn more money? And what options do I have or think that I have? That's what affects people's decisions. So when you go through a period of austerity where they gave a, um, a figure and God knows, I can't remember what it is now. Um, something like it was a 30% or a 60% cut in money going to youth services. They're, they're doing, bringing in this new thing, universal credit, fucking with people. So some people ain't even got no money at all. Basically, austerity was austerity. I'm not even going to break it down. Like I said, I'm not even planned out on a good day. This definitely isn't planned out like that. But austerity was austerity. It meant cuts. It meant less money from the government going into society, going into the places of greatest need. Because let's break this down. We live in a quasi-capitalist society. I can go back into that one, but this is not the conversation. It's quasi-capitalist. It's not free market capitalists like Milton Friedman would have um, or John Smith would have. It's quasi. So you have this government and the government is meant to be there like the beverage report broke down to put money into the places of greatest need and help people back on their feet. That's the government's job. Yeah, I've said this conversation before. Not a lot of this bullshit, this like, you know, these quangles that exist just to, um, you know, find some other shit to be outraged about and call it political correctness and create more hate against minorities. So many ways I can just um, divert this conversation. I'm trying to keep it focused. The government's meant to be there to help the people in greatest need. So when they have austerity and they cut all the money for the people in greatest need, hey, the health service, no matter what statistics you're giving us, fuck all. Massive disc massive drops in the amount of money going to it. The police service, no matter what statistics you want to give us on the streets, we know fuck all. The youth service, fuck all. Education, fuck all. So when you're doing that and you have this massive drop in the amount of money going into the places of the greatest need, because let's break this down. Rich people don't need your public school service. They have private schools and they pay for it. They don't need your public health service. They have private health and they pay for it. And they can get their own security if they so wish. And they can have private security to defend themselves or they just move to an area that's basically got very low crime because they can. So we're talking about people of greatest need and you're cutting the services for these people. So basically, fuck all's going in there. Now, how does that have an effect? Because everybody's going to want to say, oh, that doesn't affect anything. Like I said about how music does affect me. They want to tell you that music is going to make someone go and take a machete and go stab a man. But poverty isn't right. Could that make sense to you? So, OK, let me tell you how to expect something. When you have parents with um, very low ability to earn money. Yes, yes, yes. Unemployment figures are going through the fucking roof and half of them things or a good proportion of them things on zero hours contracts. So you, they, you know, Maggie Thatcher did exactly the same thing in the eighties where she gave everybody a fucking apprenticeship. White, yes. Oh, great. Unemployment figures are, 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 are at the lowest ever. No, they're not. It's just lies, damn lies and statistics. People out there um, are still working two jobs and not don't have enough money. And when you've got parents out there who have to work two jobs, all the hours that God sends, can't pay their bills, stressed and distracted, they haven't got their eyes on their kids. 
And the kids, and I always say this, your children are watching. Rappers love to say the streets are watching. Let me tell you the fuck's watching. Your children are watching. Your children are watching because your children have only got so many things to pay attention to. There are only so many things that are prevalent in your child's life. Their television, the fucking Teletubbies, their other friends at school, their teachers at school, and their parents and their family. So you are a, you have a huge effect on your children, whether you're paying attention to them or not. They're paying attention to you. They are learning that mom is stressed over money. They're learning that dad's stressed over money. They're learning that dad hates his boss and hates the shit his boss is giving him and I still can't leave because he's got to make enough money to feed his family. They're learning that mom um, can't afford to have enough money. She's back down at the benefit office again in a queue of people starting to turn racist now because she ain't getting the benefit she should be getting. So she's looking at the other people in the queue thinking, I'm born here and you just reach and start to get dragged into that whole line of stupidity. They're learning that and they're watching this and then they're going out a road and they're hitting young adulthood. When I say that, I mean like 9, 10, 11, 12, before teenage, just that's my terminology. And they're vulnerable. Now, let's talk about predators. Predators look for vulnerable people because predators have no value for your life. So there's two things going on. Of course, there are the Fagans, and they are fucking Fagans. They're modern day Fagans, and they'll sit around and they'll go out and they watch for the vulnerable kids. The grooming gangs do it, whether they're Asian grooming gangs or fucking NHS doctors, both of whom have had high profile cases against them this year. NHS doctors are supported by their staff molesting the children put in their care for treatment. And Asian, I'll say it again, from the Asian stroke, Pakistani, Indian subcontinent, grooming people. They're both predators. One ain't worse than the other. They're both predators. And so are the Fagans, the modern day Fagans, who are looking for young kids who are from disenfranchised, poor backgrounds, knowing that that child is going to be so much easier to draw into the gang culture that they want to use them for, for their own benefit. Fuck the kid. Fuck the kid. Because that kid fuck with your money, they'll have another kid do him quick fast. So let's not pretend that these are some kind of altruistic um looking out for people. I know all the gangsters are clever and if they're smart enough, they'll throw like in America they throw out big, big cookouts and they give money here, 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 here. But you know, most of it, maybe a couple of people, a couple of exceptions. I don't know these people, I just hear the stories. Maybe a couple of ex- exceptions like the big meaches of this world. Most of these guys are predators, they're just looking for fresh meat. Fresh fodder, fresh foot soldiers. You know what happens to fresh foot soldiers, right? They're the motherfuckers who get sent over the fucking trenches in the song to certain death. While the generals are sat back. Well, that's what these these predators are doing. So they're looking for fresh meat and they see the vulnerable kids. They see the parents. They see the parents who are going to turn a blind eye that the kids can be out there um, going upstate juggling a little bit and delivering a couple of packets and bringing money into the house so they don't have to worry about providing for these children because now they've got their own at the age of nine. They see that. Let's not pretend these parents aren't turning a blind eye. When I was a youth, like 30 fucking years ago, the the, the, the little bad man's name used to rob BMXs. That was one of the things. They'd punch up a boy, beat him off his bike and ride off on his bike with the trick nuts. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't want to make no joke today, right? Enough parents used to see kids pull up and fling tree BMX in the back of the um the the, the yard. They know they never bought no children no P- BMX. They know they never bought their, their pity no BMX. So how come tree BMX line up in there in your yard? Where's that from? Oh, I borrowed it from my friend. All right, and they were too distracted to even deal with the fact. Now let me go. Which friend? Let me go talk to their parents because I hear that there's kids out there beating up boys around roundabouts like I see in my own eyes and teeth in their BMX because their parents could afford it and, and your parent couldn't. So these pre- these predators, you know, they, they catch these they, they, they catch them slipping. They know the parents are distracted. They know the parents are under pressure and they catch these kids and they draw them into the lifestyle. Then like a couple of people said, it's true. A couple of these situations are just friends. As in you're moving with your friends. I, we had our little clique, our little crew. We used to call the beaters tree of us. You move with a certain man. Now everybody's prang. Everybody's hot because they know that it's dangerous out there. So you could just be with your friends and, and have a disagreement with another set of people. And all of a sudden that beef goes on forever. I'm still ignorant like that. 
I say you make a friend with me, you got a friend for life. You make an enemy of me, you got an enemy for life. And I'm ready all the while. So I'm not trying to pretend to be some holier than thou guy. I'm as ignorant as fuck. Anybody who knows me, will, anyone who knows me will tell you that. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be a better person, but that ignorance is deeply endemic in me. Like a lot of these other kids, because of the dysfunctional families they grew up or the dysfunctional family that I grew up in gave me a lot of anger that I tried very much through martial arts and other things to dissipate, but you press the wrong button, it's all still there. So that's what you've got. You've got these kids who are walking around from these dysfunctional families where the parents are too busy, too distracted, too much under pressure to really take care of them. And where they fall through that net and there should be a social services net that we're meant to pay for with our taxes. That's what the government exists for, to catch them and go, OK, your parents are under pressure. They're distracted, but we got you. Yeah, we got you. When I was young, um, the best thing I ever did in my life. The best thing I ever benefited from and gave back to was youth services. We had kids who we knew were criminals, man, or going to go in some hot stuff, but they loved music. And we set up a, I mean, a big shout out to Peter Isaacs, man, um, big time mentor, one of the people on the list who saved my life. He, he, he had the, he was running the youth service I used to go to. And I was so proud as I got older to be able to work for him in Harringay Youth Service, Tottenham. And he, you know, we had a youth thing and we had a little bit of equipment. I don't remember, I think they donated it. We got the money from the government. Nothing made, it was like a big studio, like a four track and a couple of microphones to set speakers. And kids would come in there and press the buttons, a little Casio bent up your keyboard, do, 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 try and make their beats. And then stand and rap and rap and rap and rap and rap and rap. And a couple of the kids, you know, they, they really got something out of that. There's another example, Lord Redeemer. He did something like that in South London. He invited me to come and help and teach. I couldn't make it at the time. I've always regretted that. But I know a lot of famous rappers from the 90s came out of that scheme. Some of them were hot. Some of them still went on to have some badness and go to prison. But, you know, this is when you know what you're doing. I've worked with people who ended up in prison and come back out and said to me, bro, I really appreciate what you did for me because you was trying to stop me from going there. And I've worked with um, people who have said to me that working with me was the reason they diverted from a certain group of friends and didn't end up in a situation where people got killed or people went to prison doing 25 years. There is nothing I will ever earn that's more valuable than that. Like I said, I'm going to get emotional today. Because people are dying on roads and people don't want to deal with the reality. And unfortunately, not was my favorite guy, but Sadiq Khan has got it right. It's a fucking generation. It took a generation of fucking austerity cuts to put inner city London and other parts of England in this situation. So it's going to take a fucking generation of plowing that money back in to take people out. So um, what have I tried to cover? Like, this is all freestyle. There is no structure to this. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm meandering a guy off topic. I've covered the, 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 the situation where the parents are too distracted, too much under financial pressure, too much under social pressure to really be dealing with their kids the way they should. I've covered the fact that the austerity has taken away the safety net. So now there's nowhere to, to, to catch these kids. And that's why the predators, the grooming gangs or the financial predators like the, like the, the, the gangsters, the people who run these little firms can swoop in. Now, here's the other thing that I want to talk about. When I was you, I carried a knife. Oh, no, what the fuck to have done with it? But I carried one because everybody had a knife. Now, let's just break this down and, and just keep this real because I get so sick of this argument. When people want to talk to me about black gang violence as if it's some kind of, you know, they don't go as far as saying, you know, that the whole Charles Darwin argument is endemic in black people because you're black. But they still say it's about black communities and you know, um, black music and what, the, you know, read a book, Google, what the fuck you think mods and rockers were doing on Brighton Pier every fucking bank holiday, running up and down, beating the shit out of each other and shanking each other. There were hardly any black people there, but every bank holiday, regular occurrence, mods and rockers are at it again. Gangs. What the fuck you think football hooligans were doing in the 80s? I used to love football. I used to walk to Tottenham football ground and watch matches. And I stopped going because I was like, I'm not getting shanked up because I came to watch a football match. That was dumb to me. So I stopped watching football. I stopped following football to this day. I kind of pretend sometimes, but I don't really follow football. I stopped in the 80s when football hooliganism took over and you couldn't go to a match 
without the other team's supporters trying to bust your head. Now, I'm like I said, I, I come from a martial arts background. That don't make no sense. I fight to defend my family. I fight to defend people who are in a weak position to defend the innocent. I'm not going out to fight some man to crack their head because their team scored more goals than my team. Are you fucking stupid? But you know what it is? It's male, not learned behavior. This is what people are tripping about. This is um, it's it's inherent male behavior. It's the reptile brain. It's the old brain. I can't remember. There's another term for it. There, you know, they said there's three brains. It's the fight or flight brain in men. It's the brain that allowed us to go out and be the hunters and gatherers. It's the brain that makes us the alpha male. It's the brain that makes us know that he's the alpha male and I can't fuck with him. I'm the beta male. That's what it is in all men. So all men for a period in their life, kind of, you know, and this is why some cultures have initiations. And again, going back to the whole pickup artist thing, this is where the David D'Angelo start talking some real sense. That, you know, you've got to start going and looking back at the indigenous world and looking at the initiations they put their young people through to channel that energy of I'm a 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old teenager and I think I'm a bad man. And, and, and how they teach them to be men, how men in groups collectively fuck a dad because most dads ain't there and some of the ones who are there were, ain't, ain't shit. So, you know what I mean? If you're a good dad, Respect to you, but fuck a dad. How men in groups as communities taught their children, brought their children into this environment um, as they became young adults, as teenagers, and taught them to be men and channel this energy so they don't take this energy to join up with other guys with the same energy. And the only way they can prove their manhood and release that anger is to run up and down the streets on Brighton Pier um, as a rocker stabbing mods or as a mod stabbing rockers. Or as this postcode, stabbing that postcode. Or as this football team, stabbing that football team. It's the same fucking foolishness. I appreciate that, you know, knives are maybe more prevalent now. But the root cause of violence between young men has always existed. It's inherent in us as men. You can talk all your psycho babble, all you fucking want. I came from that cycle babble, which is why I'm so interested in the things I'm learning now. Because when you really break down the alpha male, the um the reptile brain or the fight or flight brain, it all makes more sense. You no, know, the great thing about the cycle babble is that that is the beauty of humanity that we can think of ourselves abstractly and we can try and improve ourselves and be something different. But it doesn't change the reality. It's something we're moving towards. Now I can work on myself and change my reality to the person I am being, which is why I'm not in prison from all the anger that I know is pent up inside me. But I can't change the fact that my fight or flight brain makes me jump when something goes bang. And my fight or flight brain makes me look twice when a bigger muscular guy walks past me. Because I have to know if I'm under threat. And if I'm with people I love, my children, my wife, my friends, I have to know if my people are under threat. So I have to look twice. I have to peacock. I have to puff back my shoulders and push out my chest and like, listen, dude, you might be bigger than me, but you're going to get one fucking hell of a fright if you try and hurt anybody who I am meant to be protecting. That is my inherent nature going back to my fight or flight primitive brain. So we need groups, community groups, particularly if the men are being, um, I'm speaking about the young men, we have to have groups where men can go. So yeah, we have to make our own, we get that. But don't underestimate the fact that austerity took away the fucking fundraising and the financial backing, the financial backative that allowed us to have groups where men could come. You know how many men I talked out of crime when we were talking about rapping, when they were talking to me to help them with how they rapped and how they wrote their rhymes. And then we just got sat down and started talking about life. And I wasn't even good at it. You put someone like Peter Isaacs in that environment to talk sense to young people. And you are talking about a major effect on what's going on. So I'm heartbroken, man. I'm I'm fucking heartbroken. Because, because they're right. It's going to take a long fucking time. It's going to take an economic upturn 
because people aren't stupid. I'll say this now. I heard this on Simon Sizenick fuckery about the millennials. It's not all bullshit, but everyone likes to jump up and down on the millennials. And I keep on telling my kids, yeah, they were saying the same thing about the baby boomers and Generation X. And it's all just bullshit. Every generation wants to talk down to the other generation like it didn't happen. So as I keep on reminding you that if you're in your 60s or 70s, then you need to be remembering the mods and rockers or whichever fucking group it was, because it was definitely a group in your generation of young men trying to assert their masculinity and running up and down and beating the shit out of each other for no fucking reason. And, and now we just have worse tools. I mean, we're lucky in America where guns are more easily accessible. you got fucking Chirac and you got Washington and, you know, you've got places like, you know, somebody, I, I remember, remember hearing many years ago, somebody ran out on New Year's Day and shot someone just to commit the first murder of the year. So don't get it twisted just because you were using fisticuffs. And these young people are now using machetes means that the actual root cause of what you were doing was different. It's disenfranchisement. It's, it's men wanting to assert their masculinity. It's not having a safety net and a community to teach them how to do that without getting into the bullshit. And a lot of this, like I said, comes from what the government should be doing, which is providing a safety net for the people who don't have and helping them get back onto their feet until they do have. And when they do have, telling them, well done. If you dug yourself out of that um, out of hole with a little bit of our help, now trot along and go have a good life, create some value and, 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 and pr some prosperity for yourself and some value for others. And that's what the economy and the political landscape should look like. But no, nobody wants to talk about these cuts, but it's the root cause of all this shit because it feeds all the other problems. If you don't have these groups of communities to tell young people how to assert their masculinity or to get them into sports, sports is a wonderful way to get people to assert their masculinity. Rather than beating the shit out of each other on the street, if you could be the best player and your team wins, you still asserted your masculinity. Your team is the alpha. So you don't have to be out of road killing the next man. But you see, like I said, I'm, I'm tripping all over the place. Like, as when I was you, I carried a knife. And if I was in London now, I'd probably carry a knife too. And here's the thing. I hear what people are going to say. They're like, oh, that's so ignorant. F yeah, fuck you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. There is an ignorance in men. The fight or flight brain has an ignorance as part of it. So that ain't information. That's not helping the situation that is ignorant. Give me a better solution. Well, we want to tell you that most people who carry knives, get caught and stabbed with their own knife. Yeah, let me tell you something, man. There's a, there's a song I, I love. Um, I'd rather be tried by 12 than carried by six. I can't remember who made it, but it's just as, um, I think even Eminem used to be in at eight mile or something like that. Tried by 12. I'd rather be tried by 12 than carried by six. What that means is if I'm out a road, minding my own business, I've had stories before I even left England, like 12 years ago, I've heard stories of people who were just in a party, chilling, having fun, caught the glare of some guy, gave him the wrong look, walked out the club, true story, and got bored up. So if I was a young man, 18, 17, now even 15, God forbid, what's going on, and I'm out, I know that if someone, if that's what I'm going to be dealing with, for me, I'm going to want even Stevens. And I don't mean to disrespect anybody. God knows I don't want to be making light or disrespecting the pain and the suffering of any parent, because I'm a parent, so you believe me when I tell you that it's inconceivable for me to think about what the parent of a, someone, a parent who's lost a child is going through. It's inconceivable. But what I'm telling you is I understand as a young man that I ain't trying to negotiate with somebody who pulls a knife on me. <laughs> so for me, I'd be looking at even Stevens, rah, well, if everyone's carrying a blade right about now, I best be backed up. If everyone's carrying a gun right now, I best be strapped up because I'm not trying to negotiate with those people. And on a different level, although I know it was racially motivated, rest in peace. The, 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 the tragedy of Stephen Lawrence taught us the futility of trying to negotiate with somebody who has murder on their mind, somebody who is now in that irrational place where they are not in a, pos in a position to be communicated to like a human being because they're operating from their reptile brain. They're operating from their fight or flight brain. They're operating from their kill or be killed brain. Even though you don't present a threat to them, that's the brain they're operating with. So there's no negotiating with them. But I'll tell you what you can do. 
And this is not by way of advert to tell people to do this. I'm explaining this because I'm tired of hearing all the bullshit. You can, and I've done it many a time, have someone pull out something on you and you pull out something back and you pause them to think. You see, because when the man pull out something on you and you put your hands up, wicked. And fuck those movies, man. I'm not a great martial artist by any account. I've been doing martial arts for 20 years. There is no good knife defense. There is no, you are not doing your Chuck Norris um, de- no, um, taking a knife off the guy. Fuck that. You put your hands up. You've just told this guy he has the power. You run away, which is the smart thing to do. Run the fuck as fast as you can, screaming as loud as you can. Man, let's make as much attention to yourself as you can. You've still told this guy you've got the power, but you've got him a bit more nervous now because he realizes that there might be witnesses and people might see what he's doing and that might have ramifications. But you pull a knife back on him. Of course, he might be thinking, what, 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 what? Yeah, what? You think you're bad? But he's also going to be thinking, wait a minute. Now I'm, now I'm in danger. Before he was in danger, I was a threat to him. Now he's equally a threat to me. Now, if he's thinking, oh, you're a pussy, ain't nothing to me, you can't nothing to me, it's alpha male over again. You can't control every situation. But I'm telling you, I understand why young people are finding the need to carry these knives. Because it's fucking common sense. And we've got to please stop this stupid fucking argument like it isn't. You've got to stop talking to young people like they're stupid. Fucking stop it. Stop it. They're not stupid, man. They've got common sense. They're thinking to themselves, boy, what is going to happen if I'm out of road and I get caught slipping? Because that isn't going to save my life. Think of Jesus isn't going to save my life. But, oh, all right, let's see what happens. That might save my life. Because if I, I do women, he doesn't do me. Or he might even just say, fuck it, louder. And that's the situation I've been in where someone backed up on me, I backed up on them, and they took a pause. And I was like, I ain't attacking you because I was never going to attack you, but I would defend myself. And they backed up. So again, let's make this clear. I'm not, I'm not promoting carrying knives. God knows, because like I said, I cannot even begin to imagine the pain that the girls with the parents, the families, people have died. I'm just saying, if you want to solve this problem, stop talking shit. Stop fucking talking shit and start talking of the realities of what's causing this, what's causing this problem. Okay. As I said, I was just grabbing an opportunity. So I was interrupted. So I'm just going to finish up because I don't want to just. Um, have this almighty bitching session without presenting some kind of conclusions or some suggestions for how things can be made better. Firstly, I accept that what everyone else has said, that this is not a simple thing to resolve, but I was just mad at the fact that everyone's ignoring the elephant in the room as to how it was caused. And like with most things, the cause points to the solution. The cause, undoubtedly, to my opinion, the biggest contributing factor not music not social media not instagram not raps um rappers flaunting their wealth or drill music as i explained that already with the whole idea of um you know people watching action movies and war movies and not going out and joining the military they're contributing factors but their effect is minimal the single biggest contributing factor was the economy particularly austerity taking away the safety net and the um, social means and mechanisms to help people who were from a, a um, at risk background of, of falling into, the, into these kind of traps. And therefore, the number one um, solution is going to be the growth of the economy. Now, obviously, I'm going to get into the economics of it. There will be people who think that austerity will create the growth of the economy. I think that was kind of the reason that um, Clinton inherited such a good economy, etc. I don't want to get into the, the, econo- the, the politics and the economics of it. But without a doubt, if the economy is growing, you will start to see a reduction in crime and violent crime. Why is this? For some obvious reasons. Firstly, a lot of people's behavior is related to how they feel. We have this sort of time where people talk about why people are obese and why people smoke or take drugs. And they go, well, if you're so poor and so disenfranchised, you know, you should do something about it. And rather than just taking drugs and smoking and drinking yourself away. But that's not really how human psychology works. Human psychology works. that when you feel bad about things, you want something to relieve the pain. 
Now, when you feel bad about your family circumstances or your family's finances, you want something to relieve the pain. You want the inclusion of being part of a gang. You want the protection of being part of the gang. If everybody in your neighborhood uh, feels that threat, feels that threat because of gang violence. So there's the inclusion, there's the protection and also, you know, the camaraderie takes away the pain. So you want something to take away the pain. Once the economy starts to get better and that pain is alleviated, the parents have more time to focus on their children, what the children are doing, because they have less stress and distraction just trying to survive on a day to day basis. And the children will not only see that, but they'll have less pain because they'll start to have the things in the life they want. The attention from their parents and certain other as, um, aspects of society that they want. And as I said, most sensible, level headed people make judgments, risk reward. When there's very, 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 very few options, the risk of being involved in crime, gangs, drug dealing, etc., um, seems low compared to the reward because you can't get a reward from anywhere else. But when there is a much more um, buoyant economy, what you'll see is people will look at that risk and go, dude, I know I can get a lot of money, but um, you know, the rewards are great, but the risk is too high because I can get half of that just being a normal or even a model citizen. Now, in economics, going back 20 odd years to me studying economics, I remember, I believe the term was called satisficing. And that means that people will work up to a certain point, most people, where they have enough and then they're good. Now, obviously, the, the point of this, I guess, in an economic perspective is that you know, not everybody wants to become Bill Gates or, or Jeff Bezos or, you know, um, Elon Musk or a multimillionaire. Um, you know, the middle brothers. No, but not everybody wants to do that. Some people, you know, will get to, let's say, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand a year, a million a year and go, I'm good. If I can just maintain this, I'm happy. I don't want to have to put in the extra time and effort and take on extra stress to get the extra money. And the same thing happens with regards to people involved in, in crime. If you are earning enough money to have nice things and you can do this safely and legally, a lot of people will look at the extra you know, financial rewards of being involved in something dangerous and criminal and look at the potential of being locked up and or hurt and or killed and think, yo, that isn't worth it, man. I'm earning 100 grand a year. I'm good. So let's just break this down and forget the politicians talking their shit because that's what they do. Once the economy starts to look better, the potential for violent crime to fall is immense. I think this has happened. I think this is borne out in a lot of economies. Uh, and you see it working both ways as crime. Um, so as the economy goes down, crime goes up. And as the economy goes up, crime goes down. So that's the number one. The second thing is community groups. Now, as I said, austerity feeds into this a lot because my view of the government is that they're only there to administer the laws and certain things and to put in place um, the security safety net for when things go well and only help people back up to their feet when they can go and take care of themselves. And it is every person's responsibility to take care of themselves and not to live off the government because all you're doing is living off the taxes, which is basically the work of others. Right. But that's another conversation. My point I'm making is that once, you know, you, 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 you're looking at boosting the economy, the second thing or even before that happens before that happens, actually, so let's not get this twisted. That was just what I think is the number one um, solution. But the thing that has to happen is that if the money isn't going back into social services and youth services and, and all the agencies that help to protect people from falling into this type of lifestyle and problems or being groomed into it by predators, the next thing we have to start doing is setting up our own community groups. Now, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I, I think there's a place, a huge place. In fact, it's their, it's their fucking job. It's the fucking job of the government to put the money forward, our tax money that we pay to ensure that we live in a nice environment, which includes roads without potholes as much as streets without um, kids being murdered or streets without homeless people starving to death or drug addicts on opioids. opioids you know, that's what our, our tax money is all going towards, you know, um, the environment we live in. That's the whole point. Right. So as though although it's definitely their job to do so, if they're not doing it, then we need to start creating our own community groups. And more importantly, because don't get me wrong, I don't want to get nobody mad. There'll be a lot of people who'll be listening to this thing saying, what the fuck you think I've been doing? 
And I get that. I'm not taking anything away from the people who are actively doing this without the help of government. But what I really want to say is as a community, I'm not really a big fan of this, but you know, the but the bottom line is, although I still believe you have to hold the government accountable to where what they have to do when they're not doing it, sometimes we have to step in and do it. Sometimes we have to put our money where our mouth is. Sometimes we have to we have to support the people who are willing to put the time, the energy, and most importantly, the knowledge into helping our young people. So, you know, there are, um, even in times of austerity, families who are doing well, who are taking their money and, you know, doing whatever they do their money. Of course, you earned it. It's your damn business. Well, maybe we should think about setting up some charity organizations that are funded by the community, that fund the people to go into the community who can really get the attention of these young people and resonate with them and help them out of this lifestyle and help to coach them through what they're going through as young people. So what I'm saying is we need to start putting our money where our mouth is while we pressure the government. If we're pressuring the government with our left hand to do what they are meant to be doing, what their duty to us as a community is, we have to be doing something for ourselves on the right hand, not just talking about it or running around like headless chickens trying to do it ourselves, but organising together, getting together with professional experts, mentors, people who have previously worked for the government, maybe we have not got the funding now, and funding them ourselves. Let me repeat finding the professionals who do this, who are not getting the money from the government and funding them ourselves so that they can start to help alleviate the problems of violent crime, grooming, kids getting involved in gangs, kids getting involved in drug dealing and all the other associated problems that are happening amongst young people in um, our communities. And I mean, not just London, throughout the UK. Um, That's two. And the last one, is basically, so I lost my, I lost my place there. Yeah, we have to stop protecting the groomers. Now, this is a big one. I already did a, a podcast called, um, you know, no snitching about the stupidity of no snitching. And I went into the fact that, you know, when I've seen interviews of people who were knee deep in crime, knee deep in the life, knee deep in, um, gangster lifestyle, the bosses, the real bosses, The first thing all of them say is the no stitching rule is only for other people in the life. You can't be a drug dealer and a criminal. And the moment you get caught, run out there and snitch on everybody else to get yourself out of jail time. When you started dealing drugs and being involved in crime, you accepted that as a legitimate risk. It does not apply. And I repeat, all of the people, the big players say it does not apply to the people who live in the neighborhood, the people who live in a, um in the neighborhood, it's, it's not it's not doesn't apply to you. And you know because everybody wants to feel that they're cool, everyone thinks that you know yeah it applies to me. Now I know that the black community, particularly and most ethnic communities, and actually now truth be told, really all pretty much different fra- disenfranchised or poorer, even I'll say working class communities have a very 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 strong distrust of the police built over many many years of um mistreatment by the police in england and america um just to name the western countries that i'm aware of but the bottom line is this we have to stop protecting the groomers because there are people in our community who are looking for impoverished families disenfranchised children and bringing them into their lifestyle and um we ain't you know we ain't accepting that we we're not part of that so the whole no snitching thing doesn't apply to that. If some, you see somebody dragging your kid into that. Now, here's the thing. And I said this before in the other podcast. I understand. I ain't trying to tell people to go and confront these people. In fact, there was a tragic case the other day. Again, within a few weeks ago, somebody who confronted some drug dealers on his doorstep and did it over and over again and eventually was murdered. So I ain't trying to put anybody in the firing line. But we need to kill this no snitching culture. It's bullshit. It doesn't apply to us. It does not apply to hard working class people, um, hard working people, law abiding people trying to protect ourselves. When you're trying to protect yourself from people who want to create an environment where you can't step out your front door, no snitching doesn't apply to you. You've got to understand that as much as you may hate or distrust the police, the people you're protecting are fucking worse. They're worse for you. They're worse for your kids. They're worse for your community. They ain't cool. And like I said, it's a complicated issue. I'm not trying to say that all um, gang leaders are all bad, 
but a couple of cookouts a year or sponsoring the local basketball team isn't going to fool me when you've created a fucking crack epidemic and all the crack babies and all the kids who are now on the streets because their parents ain't taking care of you. Man, just do the numbers. It don't make no sense. These people are not your fucking friends. They are not cool. They're not your brethren. They're not, they're they're nothing to you. They are a fucking pestilence in your community and you need to stop protecting them. Yeah, I know. So having said that, I I, I could easily be in the firing line, but as I said, I'm not no bad man. I will always defend myself at all times. Um, And I suggest everybody else does too. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't go looking for trouble. Um, I, I, I go looking to tell the truth. And we have to stop protecting these people. You know, they, they can go do what they do, man. I, I ain't wronging no one from the perspective of life is you choose what you want to do as long as you don't affect other people. But when you're grooming young kids and bringing them into this environment and getting them um, hurt and killed for your financial benefit, you are affecting other people. So you don't get to do that. You want to go up and down and, 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 and run up, run drugs? Do you. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, that's a whole nother conversation. But don't be looking to the community for protection when our young people are dying on the street because you ain't protecting them. You're sending them out a road to kill or be killed while you're sat up, sat down cozy. And we're not supporting that. We're not defending you. We're not protecting you. We're not um, hiding the, you, you from anybody. And we're not allowing you to do it. We need to step up as a community, dump this stupid, fucking idiotic, dangerous and destructive, no snitching concept as a basic concept. You know, we have some concepts in that community that are just basic. You know, like, I don't get into it, but just, just understand the concept. Like people say, what do you mean? You're, you're, you're working class black guy. Of course you vote Labour. Like I, I had someone say to me, like, what do you mean? You're not a criminal. You must be a Christian. What the fuck are you talking about? You can't just assume that. Jim, you don't know anything about me. What you do know is that, okay, I'm working class and I'm not a criminal. So you assume I must be a Christian. That's the dumbest shit in the world. Well, here's the thing. Don't just assume that because you're working class or you're black or from any other minority, um, you know, it's your job to protect criminals against the police because this ain't Robin Hood. These motherfuckers ain't stealing shit and giving to you. And these aren't the guys. This ain't like the Black Panther Party um, for self-defense where they're walking around with guns that they legally own protecting you from brutal police. You know, because in that instance, the police might call them criminals. Or this ain't the A and C where they're trying to liberate your country from an oppressive regime where the government, including Margaret Thatcher, calls them criminals. But, you know, they're freedom fighters. These people aren't freedom fighters and they're not protecting you from brutality. They're creating more brutality, hurt and derision and pain and death and destruction in your community. And they do not deserve your protection. So quick solutions. We need the economy to bounce back. Um, that's not in our control, but that's going to be the long-term solution, no matter how you swing it. We need more community groups and we need to start funding them ourselves. If the government ain't doing their job, we have to wait for our opportunity to vote them the fuck out. And in the interim, we need to start putting our own money where our mouth is, rather than just complaining about how terrible it is, do something about it with your money or get together a group of people and put together, um, you know, an initiative, but don't make it an ego project. Get the people with the expertise and pay them to run the project from community funded money and then help to divert your kids into it. Man, most kids, not black kids, most kids love sport and music. Let's start there. Just start there and then arts and then um, technology and whatever they're into. And let's start diverting them and showing them how they can make millions like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or, you know, any other names I can't think of right off my head, rather than be on street getting pimped out sent up to Edinburgh with a bag to drop off for somebody and come back with money. Show them some other opportunities and avenues, get them to meet some sporting stars and some music stars and show them that this can be done and get them to, you know, some some other some other businesses and industries and, and people leading in that as well. And lastly, let's stop protecting, let's stop protecting the criminals. They are not our friends. They are not friends of our community. They are a pestilence and they don't deserve our protection. And no snitching doesn't make you cool because you ain't a fucking criminal. You're a victim. So so like in all instances, stop being the victim that protects the abuser. Um, be, the, be the victim that says hashtag me too. Let's take these motherfuckers down. Let's 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 get them out of our communities. Um, and if they're going to do what they're doing, 
They let them do it, you know, like they say, when it used to be done with respect, when it was just kept between each other and people who chose that life rather than them going out and grooming kids and dragging them into that life that isn't for them. Let them go find people who want to do that and do that amongst each other. Keep it over there and it's all good. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's all I can say. As I said, I try not to do these, but I'm only human and I really just needed to say something about this because it's been on the news left, right and centre day in, day out. And it just seemed to me, that, I mean, don't get me wrong, I saw a lot of very good interviews. I had seen some really heartbreaking interviews with parents who've lost their children, which I just as I say, yet again, I can't even begin to fathom how they feel and I've not got respect for them even to turn up and have those conversations. I've seen a lot of um, great interviews with people who are working in the community and doing their own initiatives. I have nothing but respect for those people as well. There is nothing in this podcast that's trying to disrespect the work that's been done by anybody trying to alleviate this problem. I just wanted to add my voice because there's a lot of shit that was either not being said or just not being said very loudly. And I think that the the distraction isn't going to help us. And no, this isn't some dumb political game. This is young people and their lives. Uh, people at the beginning of their lives, people haven't even started to live their lives, Do you know, and, and, and for you young people out there, man, this is some Friday shit, um, and if you've ever seen that movie Friday, starring Ice Cube, and um, I can't remember his name now, now um, Chris, Chris Tucker, but this is for real, man, one of the things that has changed is, is the uh, accessibility of, of dangerous weapons, when I was a youth, we had um, Ratchet Knife, we had, um, what's it called again, we had Ratchet Knife, I had Nunchucks, I'm not talking about the gun situation, but that was around as well, you know, but the reality of it was this. If you had a beef for the guy more often than not, you put up your fists, you swung it out and whoever won, whoever went home with their, um, with, with their, with, with their ego bruised or their face bruised or their ribs brush busted up, you lived to walk the street another day. And so many times, so many times, then people became your friends in the future, man. And you're not giving yourselves the opportunity. And I know that I'm an old ass man talking some old ass shit, um, but I still got to talk it because it's true, you know, that there, you know, there are ways to deal with, with, um, with disagreements and they, 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 they're not all sitting around, a, um, sitting around a campfire singing kumbaya. You know what I'm trying to say, if you're really mad with somebody, man, you can go and get, get you can go bang them up. But if you're going to be a man about it, be a man about it. Tell them, put down their things and step up and see who wins and go the fuck home and, and, and lick your bruises and whatever you have to do, man. But, you know, the, you, you have no right to take anyone's life. You didn't breathe breath into them, whatever you believe religiously, university. You didn't breathe breath into them. You didn't carry them for nine months. You didn't lift them as a baby and bathe them and, and walk them around. You're going to right to take their life, man. You mad with them? Beat them the fuck up. Do what you got to do, man. And I know that on, 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 in the crime, in the gangster, the drug thing, that's kind of another story, but I still have to put that out there. That, you know, my reality is I've had beef with people and I'm still alive to talk about it because nobody tried to kill each other. Um, and, you know, I just need you guys to think about that. I appreciate it's It's out of time. It's some old man shit. But I still need you to think about that reality, you know, that, you know, some of these people, man, could be your best fucking friend in five, six years time. You laugh about the time you had beef and be amazed at the things you've achieved if you don't get drawn into this shit. And more importantly, you have no idea what you could achieve for yourself or for other people or for this planet. If you don't put yourself in this in this position to get out, it's like a light for fucking nothing. For nothing, man. I wrote a tune, man. Um, you know what I mean? Taking a life for a, um, for a fucking postcode. Are you joking? You know what I mean? It's really like, seriously, people, you don't own, you don't even own a house in that road. You don't even make, if you ain't made enough money doing what you was doing to buy a house in that road, I could even see why you're mad. That man's on your postcode, but you don't own a jack fucking thing in that road. But your sense of disenfranchisement makes you think that that's all you got to defend is your postcode, your road, your ends, your zone your crew, your man's them, but I'm telling you, the only thing you really have to fucking defend is your life. So please, you know what I mean? Consider it, t t listen to some of us older heads. Some of us older heads have been for a couple of things too. And, uh, and we're here to tell the tales and we want you to get to like 40, 50 years old and be able to have these conversations, not to, to, to be a, um, a mural, a name on a wall or a gravestone that people stop going to visit, man. Your whole life's ahead of you, please.
um, you know, concentrate on what you can achieve, not 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 the shit that's going on with you right now. You've got to think, you know, really put yourself, visualize yourself in the future as to what you want and see if what you see, see the risk reward, see if what you're doing right now is really likely to get you there. Or if it's likely not to, because enough men go through crime and believe me, I tell you, they come out with fucking nothing. Nothing. I could do the economics of it for you. It's bullshit. Very few come out the other end with a penny in their pocket. So it's instant gratification. It's nice for now, but there's fucking nothing in there. Um, you know, but that's a, that's a conversation for another day. I've done said enough. I've done said too much, but it was really important. So, um, this is the Grand the Papa. This is the GDPLS, um, podcast. Thank you for listening. And, um, yeah, that's all I could say. Um, as they used to say in the um, Hill Street Blues, man, until this shit gets sorted, let's be careful out there. It gaff till a gaff. It gaff till a gaff. I'm in with the till a gaff. In live with the till a gaff. Need gaff, need gaff. Need gaff, need gaff.